When I fit the Go Faster Bits Diverter Valve to my Cooper R last year and put the whole process on YouTube, I had no idea the debate it would kick off. Actually, I got five thumbs down for that video as well. Not that I'm too bothered, to be honest. But in this video, I'll be sharing my thoughts on the Go Faster Bits Diverter Valve. I'll be letting you know how the piston is after 12 months of not looking at it because I haven't serviced that piston at all. And I'll let you know as well if I'm going to be keeping the Go Faster Bits Diverter Valve on the car or if I'm going to get one of those Revision G Diverter Valves instead and swap them over. Hey, I'm Kev and welcome to North Coast Workshop, where you'll find content on car modification and DIY. In today's video, we're doing a follow-up video to one of my most successful videos from last year, the Go Faster Bits Diverter Valve that fitted to my Cooper R. So basically when it comes to this Diverter Valve for this engine, there's kind of two teams. There's the Go Faster Bits team and there's the Revision G team as well. Now the team I've chosen to be on is the <laughs> So yeah, that's it. That's the team I'm on and uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Cheers. No, I'm joking. So today's video, what we're going to do is I'm going to be nipping out in the car. We'll do a test run in the car, well, not test run, but a cruise in the car, so to speak. Let you kind of get my thoughts on how the car runs with this Go Faster Bits Diverter Valve. So when I get the Diverter Valve off the engine, we're going to check the piston, see how freely it's moving, because there's a common talking point is that that piston sometimes begins to stick. It does become lubricated in oil at the start, and people say it has to be serviced every so often as well. So I'm going to check mine after 12 months of not touching it at all to see if it's dried out, or if it's still moving back and forth, no bother. I am then going to briefly do a wee run through of what a diverter valve does, because a lot of people on a post I put up a few weeks ago said they weren't too sure on what diverter valves do in the engine, so I'll do a quick explanation of a diverter valve and its purpose in the car. And then finally, my thoughts on this revision G versus go faster bits diverter valve arguments. So my thoughts regarding whether I'm going to stick to my go faster bits diverter valve or whether I'm going to go and purchase a Rev G and fetch the car instead. So stick around for that, and uh, what we'll do now is jump in the car and go for a quick run. Right, let's take a spin. just pulled off onto a kind of smaller country road here rather than that noisy main road and busy main road. So 12 months on with the Go Faster Bits Diverter Valve, what's my thoughts? Well, it's worked flawlessly for me for 12 months. I must say it's not given me any reason to concern that it's not like an OEM fit diverter valve. It's worked every single time when I need boost, it's always provided full boost. Uh, it worked perfectly when I was getting my stage one remap done and Matty did a full health check on the car before he did the remap and he was perfectly pleased with the car and the way it was performing and he had no reason to concern that the Go Fast Bits Diverter Valve was fitted and it wasn't a Revision D or a Revision G like everyone else has. And so can I stand by my claim that if you're driving enthusiastically and you're rapidly going through the gears I think you still get on boost faster in between gear changes and yeah it could just be in my head because I've got this fitted now and I think it's made some difference but I have seen reports other people saying the same thing that they notice their gear changes that they can get back on boost a lot faster and this road's just as busy as the main road <laughs> worse for holes a wee pull here to see if you can hear the noises of the diverter valve. Yeah, 
it definitely goes all right. 60 comes up pretty fast. And this road is falling to bits. <laughs> He's coming this road. job under the bonnet. this crappy road, get back to the garage, take off this diverter valve, this go faster bit diverter valve and see what like that piston is. So here we have it, the diverter valve, and as you might have seen when I took it off the car, lost the spring briefly. So if you are taking it off the car, try and take it off as one full piece and don't let these two parts separate. So you've got the original diverter valve here, this is the solenoid from the original one. I had the version D, you've got the spring that sits inside it, then you've got a small piston here, it sits on top. And then this is the main part here, the main housing that you get from GFB, and this is the piston that everyone talks about that isn't moving freely. but as you can see here, it seems to be still sitting in the housing nicely. It's not wiggling from side to side, so it's not got any play in the housing. It's, it's a nice tight fit, but it's just loose enough that it still moves back and forth freely as well. And I can't see any really excess amounts of oil. Yeah, from what I'm seeing here, it's really still moving really well and showing no signs of sticking or failing. So there you have it. If you haven't seen these being fitted to the car before in detail, then check out my other video, the previous video I did last year. I'll leave a link below in the description and the wee thing in the top corner of the screen. And just make sure when you're putting these back together, there is a wee recess here in the top corner, and that just lines up with the bit that sticks up, just here is the bit that sticks up. But yeah, that's perfect. It's got no issue at all. Uh, I'm really happy with that and it's going to go back on the car as it is. Just remember when fitting these back on the car, the housing on the car itself, on the engine, will hold this piston in place once it's in place, but until then, just make sure you always keep this piston in manually or else it will just slide out and you'll lose it in the engine bay. So we'll pop this on just now.
Right, I've borrowed my daughter's magnetic drawing board here to try and demonstrate the basics of a diverter valve. Now, I'm not saying this is definitely the exact science behind it. This is just kind of my understanding. So please bear with me and it might be slightly wrong in places. So I apologize if it is. So basically what happens is when you're running the engine, you're drawing air in through the air filter here, into the turbo, going through the turbine wheel, and then that is building pressure and putting the pressure in through the intercooler to cool that charged air along the charge pipe here, past the throttle body and into the engine through the intake manifold. Now you have here the kind of butterfly valve, which controls the amount of air that's going into the intake manifold. Now when your foot is flat to the floor and you're giving it the beans basically, you're going to have this butterfly valve fully open. So all the air coming along here is free to move straight through the throttle body, intake, intake manifold and into the engine. But when you have to take your foot off the throttle and this butterfly valve closes, the ECU recognises this and tells the diverter valve that this has happened and the diverter valve retracts the piston inside creating a gap for the excess pressure to get through and in the system that I've got on my car, the TFSI engines, it reroutes the pressurised air back through into the pipe that goes back into the turbo and reuses it. And then when you put your foot back down on the throttle, uh, the ECU recognises this it then closes off again the diverter valve so this is sealed and then this lets boost pressure build again and get pushed back into the intake manifold without causing any form of leak here at the diverter valve. Now some cars don't have this system where it recirculates it back into the turbo like this. What happens is when it closes off in other cars you'll get what you call a blow-off valve so the pressurised air will go through and rather than getting rerouted back in it'll just get vented off into the atmosphere and give you that whoosh sound from a blow-off valve. And this is why it's so important the diverter valves work perfectly and don't have any faults with them because if this is causing any sort of boost leak when you've got your foot to the floor and this hasn't properly sealed off here and it's letting gases escape through the diverter valve this means that the engine's not getting maximum boost pressure air into it at the right time. And it can work the same in the other way as well where it's basically not releasing pressure at the right time so it's holding this closed the whole time it's not letting any gases escape when this throttle body has closed off so all the boost pressure air is building up again and causing issues with the turbo. So this diverter valve has to make sure that it works both ways perfectly. And that is it. Hopefully that makes sense and hopefully I've explained it correctly. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if I haven't, but that is my understanding of how a diverter valve works in this engine. So the Go Faster Wits diverter valve has gone back on my car as you've seen and I'm happy to carry on using it for another 12 months, if longer. It's worked perfectly well. I've got no reasons for concern with it. Taking it apart and seeing the piston as well, the piston was moving freely, so I have no reason to think maybe the piston is about to seize up at some point on the road. But in my application of my car, stage one, 327 brake horsepower, it's been perfectly fine. Now, I'm not saying that these things don't cause issues. I've heard reports of when they've maybe not performed well on stage two, stage two plus remaps, then yeah, I totally understand these things maybe don't work in every single application. There's a lot of fake versions out there and that does give Go Faster Bits a bit of a bad press when these fake versions get mixed in with the good ones and people don't really tend to realise that it's a fake one that's causing the issues. But like I said, I'm totally open-minded and I know that sometimes even the genuine ones don't always work. Junior specialists as well, Artec, they highly recommend the version G before they do a remap of any sorts. If you've got version C or D, they'll ask you to put a Vision G on the car or they'll supply and fit one themselves and put it on the car. They do remap, I think, cars with the Go Faster Bits diverter valve. But I think out of the two, they'd always recommend the OEM Revision G diverter valve. If you are worried you may have a fake one on your hands or you maybe purchased a fake one, haven't fit it yet, I'll leave a link down below in the description for a video that actually identifies differences between a fake one and a real one. So you can check the box, check the packaging, check the item itself to make sure it's all legitimate and that you're not going to put a fake one on your car by accident. So hopefully you found the video useful and it's answered a few questions regarding this GoFastBits diverter valve. If you have any more questions at all, drop it down below in the comments and I'll try and answer it as best as I can. And if this GoFastBits diverter valve fails in any sort of way, I will let you guys know immediately. So don't worry, I'm not going to try and cover up. I will be open and honest if this does fail, but hopefully it doesn't because just now it's working perfectly. Now the diverter valve on these cars could be classed as a service item because they do start to fail with age and wear out. And I've left a playlist up here of other videos for service items that I've done the how-tos on and how to change them and how to replace them on your car as well. So check that playlist out. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button as always guys and hit subscribe down below to catch more videos in the future. Cheers for watching and I'll catch you next time. Cheers!